right, let's find out what's cooking this patch. We've got some more sleeper builds here for you guys, so make sure to stay tuned and find out what they are. By the way, my name is Dan, and I'll be running you guys through our sleeper OP builds for patch 10.8. In this video, we're going to run you through some new or underplayed builds that you guys should be aware of. Do me a quick favor though and answer our question of the day. What do you think of the two week patch cycles? Are they too short, too long, just right? Personally, I wish they were a little longer. Three weeks or a month would give players some more time to find answers to picks that are already built into the game. Sure, complaining about a champion on social media is arguably one of the best ways to counter a champion, but I think there's a lot of satisfaction in finding ways to beat what's considered OP. Let me know what your answers are down below in the comments section. Anyways, guys, let's get into the video, starting with the top lane. All right, first up, we have Zillion Top. Zillion is a pretty flexible pick. He's a utility mage who has a pretty clear goal in mind. He's there to ruin someone on the enemy team's day and also give his teammates the chance to become race cars and zoom right through Summoner's Rift. As a result of his range, safety, and wave clear, he can be played top in certain matchups. This build focuses mostly on Zillion's utility, but don't underestimate him because he still packs quite a punch. For his runes, take Glacial Augment, Magical Footwear, Biscuit Delivery, Cosmic Insight, Transcendence, and Mana Flow Band. Glacial Augment synergizes heavily with the various slowing items you'll build, while Cosmic Insight is almost never a bad take on basically any mage. For his items, build a Hextech GLP, Twin Shadows, Ninja Tabby, Morella Namicon, Rabadon's Death Cap, and Azania's Hourglass. With Hextech GLP and Twin Shadows, you'll be able to make pick after pick since you're running Glacial Augment as well. You're able to save your E to speed either yourself or teammate up as you already have plenty of slows to assist you in landing your bomb combos. Hecarim Top is making his resurgence as well. While some nerfs in the past took him out of the top lane, he's been slowly trying to once again rampage through the top lane. With so many melee bruisers in the meta, it's no surprise that Hecarim is finding his footing once again. He's got four after all. All right, that was bad. But moving on, you definitely want to give him a try in the top lane. Hecarim deals an insane amount of damage and also heals a ton with his W as well. As a result, he's a great answer to many picks up in the top lane as he can stand up to them in long extended trades. Another great thing about Hecarim top is that you can run Ignite on him. With all the healing that's in the game right now, especially in the top lane, playing a champion who could run Ignite is a great luxury to have. This also makes Hecarim's all-ins even stronger. For his runes, run Conqueror, Triumph, Tenacity, Last Stand, Biscuit Delivery, and Time Warp Tonic. Everyone's abusing Conqueror, and Hecarim is no exception. It's a great rune on him because it drastically increases his damage output, as well as his healing. Biscuit Delivery and Time Warp Tonic give Hecarim that slight edge he needs in lane, providing some extra sustain, as well as movement speed to better maneuver during trades and skirmishes. For items, build Trinity Force, Steric Gauge, Mercury Treads, Guardian Angel, Edge of Night, and Immortal Reminder. Trinity Force is a bread and butter item on Hecarim. As he's constantly spamming his Q, you'll be able to get a ton of value from the item's passive. And Hecarim also utilizes all the stats it provides excellently. Edge of Night as well as Mortal Reminder provides some extra armor penetration, allowing Hecarim to deal with both tanks and squishies alike. Hecarim's incredible raw damage output means that he highly benefits from lethality and armor penetration. All right, that's gonna cover the top lane. Make sure to check out those builds on the screen one last time. Next up, let's talk about junglers. A new Udyr build is slowly gaining popularity. This one is aimed at covering for Udyr's biggest weakness, his lack of mobility. Both his runes and items in this build are focused on making sure that Udyr can get in and out. First up, let's run through those first. For runes, run Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, Water Walking, Magical Footwear, and Approach Velocity. Once Udyr reaches his target, he has absolutely no issue activating Phase Rush. After hitting them with a the Bear Stance basic attack, his target is going to be stunned anyway, and what's easier than smacking the living daylights out of an immobile target? Running Nimbus Cloak is a must. This is going to make your life so much easier when coupled with a Stalker's Blade. Celerity, Water Walking, and even Approach Velocity all provide Udyr some well-needed assistance. For his items, build a Runic Echoes, Boots of Swiftness, Medjai's Soul Stealer, Lich Bane, Shirelia's Reverie, and a Spellbinder. If you're falling far behind, you'll have to forgo the Medjai's, but in games that are looking good, you definitely want one. As long as you're able to maintain at least 10 stacks, you gain 10% movement speed from it. For a 1,400 gold item, this is massive, and the item is even more gold efficient as long as you're able to avoid random deaths. Boots of Swiftness, Light Bane, Shirelia's Reverie, and Spellbinder all provide Udyr movement speed as well. These items combine to provide Udyr an obscene 
obscene amount of movement speed. Also, if it isn't clear to you, this is an AP Phoenix Stance Udyr build. You won't be leveling Tiger Stance at all, as you'll be focusing more on maximizing the damage output from Phoenix Stance, as well as the shields from Turtle Stance. Anytime an opponent is out of position, you'll be able to catch them out simply because you're faster than them. Stalker's Blade is a giant help, of course, but these items along with Bear Stance will almost always be enough to catch up to your enemies. While it might be considered old by some people, Halo Blades Vi is currently the norm. Not everyone is up to speed on this, however, so we're here to shed some light on it. The reason you want to run Halo Blades is that Vi gains some bonus attack speed from her W once she's able to proc it on an enemy. Halo Blades gives her that kickstart she needs, and from there, she's able to continue to fight with some increased attack speed. Of course, she also gains some nice burst damage from Halo Blades as a result of the attack speed. For runes, take Hail of Blades, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Triumph, and Legend Alacrity. Sudden Impact is an optimal rune, as you'll jump at foes with Q and instantly gain a burst of lethality. The extra lethality is rather valuable early on, when champions don't have as much armor. Relentless Hunter will allow Vi to traverse through the jungle more quickly, and also position for ganks much more quickly. For her items, build Warrior, Ninja Tabby, Trinity Force, Sterix, Guardian Angel, and an Adaptive Helm. Trinity Force and the Warrior Enchant give Vi a solid source of burst damage, and she'll be able to delete squishies through the mid-game with these items, and then she'll slowly transition into an off-tank bruiser as the game progresses. One last time, here are those jungle builds on the screen for you guys. Check those out, save them, do whatever you need to do. Alright, let's talk about the mid laners. First up for mid laners is After Shock Twisted Fate. More like I'm shocked to even see this. Twisted Fate has one of the easiest times activating Aftershock. Pick a gold card, right click an enemy champion, and boom, you're done. What running Aftershock on Twisted Fate does is it helps him trade effectively, even in otherwise risky or dangerous matchups. Against champions with high burst damage, running Aftershock allows Twisted Fate to go for trades that he would otherwise lose. Typically, throwing your gold card and following up with a wild card is all he's got. When his opponents simply outdamage him, it's a sad time for Twisted Fate players because there really isn't much of an answer. Since Aftershock will briefly mitigate any damage he'll take, you're able to trade, then immediately back off while waiting for Aftershock to come off cooldown. This gives Twisted Fate some well-needed pressure during the laning phase. For runes, take Aftershock, Demolish, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, Minion Dematerializer, and Cosmic Insight. Minion Dematerializer will help you clear minion waves, while Demolish will significantly increase your damage to turrets whenever your opponent leaves lane, or after a successful roam to a side lane. Bone Plating is another great defensive supplement, and we already saw a ton of Twisted Fate players running this in the past. For items, you'll build Rod of Ages, Mercury Treads, Lich Bane, Zanya's Hourglass, Banshee's Veil, and a Rapid Fire Cannon. Ultimately, this build provides a ton of safety to Twisted Fate, so he'll be able to zone off enemies, deal consistent damage, and snipe them with long-range gold cards. Most importantly, however, this build makes Twisted Fate incredibly difficult to kill because of how tanky he gets from his runes and items. Also, this build only provides 30% cooldown reduction, so you'll need to take cooldown reduction as your offensive stat rune. Hextech GLP is the new Ludens, basically, and even Cassiopeia is building it. Is it even better than a Seraphs for her? Well, that's always subjective, but some players definitely think so. As a rather immobile mage, Hextech GLP helps Cassiopeia chase down her foes and also run away from them. That slow goes both ways, and you get to use it however you like. Landing Q can be tricky a lot of the time, but slowing your foes once can help you land that first Q for a burst of movement speed so that you can chase down your enemies. Ultimately, building a Hextech GLP GLP also means that you won't have to stack up the Seraph's Embrace. You finish a GLP, and you hit your spike immediately. Instead of a tier, you get to immediately build into either a Lost Chapter or a Hextech Revolver. While you do end up trading that juicy shield, you get much more immediate gratification with this build. For runes, take Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Tenacity, Coup de Gras, Biscuit Delivery, and Time Warp Tonic. All standard stuff for Cassiopeia. For items, build a Hextech GLP, Rod of Ages, Banshee's Veil, Morella Nomicon, Rylai's Crystal Scepter, and a Rabadon's Death Cap. That's going to wrap up our mid lane builds. Once again, we're going to put those builds on the screen one last time for you guys to check out. Next up, let's head over to the bottom lane. In the bottom lane, we got a new oppressive duo lane making the rounds. Draven and Bard. Not really an iconic duo, but a powerful one nonetheless. When you gotta play against these two champions, it's time to cue the text that reads, you feel like you're going to have a bad time. Both of these champions are notorious lane bullies, and when you pair them together, it's a throwback to middle school, where you got not one, but two bullies taking your lunch money. 
First up, let's talk about Draven's setup. For items, he'll take Hail Blades, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Presence of Mind, and Legend Bloodline. For his items, he'll build a Man Immune, Ghost Blade, Dusk Blade, Berserker's Greaves, Edge of Night, and Lord Dominic's Regards. These items provide a ton of lethality, as well as raw damage for Draven to work with. Lethality, armor penetration, and flat damage all increase Draven's basic attack damage, but AD also scales into bonus damage on his Q. By running Hail of Blades, Draven is able to chunk out his enemies, especially in the mid-game where he finishes stacking his tier. Like any bully, he feeds off the tears of his victims. Bard runs Hail of Blades, Taste of Blood, Zombie Ward, Relentless Hunter, Bone Plating, and Revitalize. Hail of Blades is strong in the early game, as it'll obviously provide some trading power. As Bard collects more chimes and increases the limit on the number of meeps he can hold, Hail of Blades becomes even stronger. Once Bard has collected 30 chimes, he can hold on to 3 meeps, and unleash them all in a rapid succession of attacks on an unlucky opponent. For items, build a Shard of True Ice, Boots of Mobility, Rapid Fire Cannon, Dead Man's Plate, Randuin's Omen, and Locket of the Iron Solari. Together, these two have an insane amount of damage and kill pressure during the laning phase. Walking up to farm against them is always a huge risk because of how insanely powerful their all-ins are. Make sure to check out those builds on the screen one last time because we're going to wrap things up with supports. If you watch our other videos, you're going to be familiar with this one. We talked about Zanya's Rakan in our Korean builds video for this patch, but thought it'd be worth mentioning it again in this one too. A lot of Rakan players feel like they're pretty helpless after using their full combo. While it's great to hold on to the second charge of his E to get out, sometimes you just can't. Sometimes you have to dash to allies twice to either save them or get into a good position for an ultimate into W combo. The solution to this is a simple purchase, Zanya's Hourglass. Stasis is crazy strong and it enables Rakan players to go in as aggressively as they would like. At worst, they'll at least live a few more seconds than they otherwise would. For runes, take Guardian, Demolish, Bone Plating, Revitalize, Nimbus Cloak, and Celerity. Nimbus Cloak is a great rune to take on Rakan. Casting Ignite or Exhaust, or even when using Flash, you gain a burst of movement speed which will heavily assist you in landing your ultimate and W. For items, build Bulwark of the Mountain, Boots of Mobility, Zeke's Convergence, Redemption, Zanya's Hourglass, and a Knight's Vow. A typical support build with an Hourglass thrown in there. We got one more Bard build for you guys. Aside from Hail of Blades, you can also run Glacial Augment. One iconic part of Bard's playstyle is his incredible engage and pick making. This build highlights locking down opponents, singling out opponents who have overstepped their bounds, and crowd control rather than Bard's oppressive laning phase. What makes Bard's pick making so powerful is the long range on his ultimate, his ability to follow up with his Q, and the ability to bring himself and his teammates in with his portal. By running Glacial Augment alongside accessory items, Bard is able to lock down foes with ease, slow them, then follow up with an ultimate, and ironically, they're golden for a few seconds. Once they're not, you line up your Q and look for a stun for a free pick. For runes, run Glacial Augment, Perfect Timing, Biscuit Delivery, Time Warp Tonic, Cheap Shot, and Ingenious Hunter. Ingenious Hunter will significantly cut the cooldown on the items you need to build. The items are Bulwark of the Mountain, Boots of Mobility, Twin Shadows, Zanya's Hourglass, Frozen Heart, and Locket of the Iron Solari. Twin Shadows will assist you with your picks, while Zanya's Hourglass and Locket of the Iron Solari provide some extra protection. That's gonna wrap up support, so take a look at the screen one last time for those builds. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure to check out ProGuys.com as well as our YouTube channel for even more informational content just like this. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and like this video so that you can stay updated with any new content we release. Until next time, good luck on the Rift, Summoners. Thank you